Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Pyromancer here and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. And thank God I'm not the only person who's starting to see how important death is in the Warcraft universe. My boy Bellular put out a video very, very recently. I think it was just yesterday. There was a link to it in the description. Go and check that video out if you can after this one. In which he talks about the light, the void, the relationship between the light, the void, and the undead, undeath, and Sylvanas, Bolvar, and even Kalia Menethil. Fantastic video. Um, can't really say anything bad about it. But the, the, the best thing about this is, is that I have spoken about the importance of death in the past before and how crucial and essential it is to defeating the void. And thankfully, because Valular decided to kind of enlighten this a little you know a little bit more and, and really go in depth um about how the void tries to interact with undeath and all of these different things i figured now was a good time to kind of go over it again and try to relate it to the bigger picture the grand scheme of things because um you know you can definitely relate it to the forsaken and all of those things that are transpiring right now on azeroth but as you guys know with my speculation i like to focus more on the titans and the old gods and the, the grand scheme of things. And the irony as it is, Belular, by the end of his video, comes to the, the conclusion that there's the uh, potentiality that death is the true way that the void can be exterminated. And he's right, because there's something about the void that everyone talks about, but no one's really getting from what I can tell. Everyone says that the void and the light are two sides of the same coin. And you're right, but it goes further than that, because the light literally is the void, and the void is the light. Let me explain. The Titan Pantheon values order and life and creation, and that's beautiful, and that's great. And these are things that the Draenei also value. The Draenei, on that note, are essentially orderly demons. We've seen nothing like them. They are unique in that aspect. They value creation and light and the arcane, very, very similar to the Titans. Now, I'm going to make a quick correlation to StarCraft II with the Zelnaga and the Protoss. The Zelnaga were like basically the creator race in StarCraft II, and one of their perfect races that they made was the Protoss. The Protoss look exactly like Draenei, and StarCraft II is yet again another Blizzard game that involves things like the Void and all, and all different types of things. There are also other storyline correlations with certain characters like Sylvanas and Kerrigan. If you're familiar with StarCraft II, you might see a little bit where Sylvanas' character might be going. But back to the Warcraft side of it. The Draenei in the Army of the Light, I believe, existed far before where Chronicle says that it does. Because Chronicle says that from the ashes of the worlds, and Zero says the same thing, the ashes of these burned worlds, uh, the Army of the Light arose to stand against the Legion. The funny thing is, is that when you start reading the short stories like Velen, A Prophet's Lesson, which is found on the Warcraft site, you read about things like the Legion invading a world that the Draenei, Velen specifically, knew of, and he himself even had a name for it. Velen shows Anduin this planet in a vision, and Velen explains that none of the creatures on that planet spoke a dialect that the, the Draenei could understand. They couldn't communicate with them. And Velen, like I said, had, had even come up with his own name for it. Now, Anduin, in this vision that he was shown by Velen, this chaotic, maddening vision, how ironic, we'll be talking about Velen a little bit later on, he was shown that there were these mountainous uh, structures, these weird kind of uh, almost crystalline structures, and there were these strange alien looking creatures and beings uh, infused with the light. And then all of a sudden, the Legion came and the Legion shattered it all and broke it all. And what I believe this is, is the Legion going and seeking out a world that the Naru and the Draenei had visited. They had encased creatures, I believe in uh, crystals of the Naru. And as I've mentioned several times before, Alex, one of the lead designers of World of Warcraft, spoke about this in an interview. He said, perhaps one day we'll go out and see the worlds encased in the, in the blue and pink crystals and gold crystals of the Naru. Um, but there, there is the void and there is the light. Um, and it's also just something to, to understand in general is what is the void? And it's, I, I feel like we try to give it, um, you know, personify it with people. Is, is, its, is its intent. The reality is, it's, it's way more gray 
in black and white, and <laughs> evil, like you say, Locust Walker is the only one, it's not, right? Like, look, one day I hope to be able to go to the void, right? And I, I hope for us to see the horrors within that the light's causing. Because that, that's where you get the perspective of things, right? Planets entombed in void here and tentacles rising and devouring entire planets that exist on this side of the void. Is there, is there a counter to that where we go to the void and we see entire planets crystallized in the, the pink, yellow plating of the Naru and the light? And how tyrannical is that to the inhabitants of those worlds? And I believe that this is something that they've been doing for a long time. I believe that the Drenai, long ago, were a different race and that the Pantheon came to their planet and potentially either ordered them or re-originated them and turned them into what they are now, orderly demons. And what they set out to do, of course, was to protect the life and preserve the life. And it's a, it's a very noble thing to try to do, right? It's great. You're, you're spreading the light, spreading the hope. But there's a problem. And that is that when you spread the light, you're also spreading the void. Because without the cyclical design that is meant for this universe that includes proper and true death, when the light runs out of power, when the light runs off of life essence to feed on, to bond with, runs out of hope, when it runs out of mortal fuel, so to speak, it goes to the void. The void is essentially just dead light. And Zalatath even makes mention that the Naru see the void as hor you know, horrific creatures, you know, abominations, but the void doesn't see the light that way because the void knows that the light will return to the void in time. So you see this goal of the Drenai going around and doing these um, doing this, this noble work to preserve the life and all that, while it seems great, it's actually dooming the universe. Because as the light spreads and as this, this holy energy is, is thrown out into the cosmos, just like it says at the start of Chronicle, where the light lost its energy, pockets of void started to coalesce. So let me ask you as a question. What happens if you coat the whole universe in light and nothing except light exists light takes over all what happens like i said when it runs out of fuel when everything ends when every when 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 the souls that they're that they're using as fuel and we know that this is true because we've seen it with the drenai we've seen it with the naru and akandun we've seen it with their giant vigilant constructs that they take the souls of their fallen vindicators and stick them into these big robots and then eventually uh, they end up serving the Drenai in the future, but the souls aren't ever really dying. That's the problem, is they're being kept alive eternally. This can't work. You can't have eternal light uh, and eternal life sustained by one another. You can't have a, cyc a cyclical design that works without the most fundamental part of natural cycles, and that is death. Now, Bellular says at the end of his video, I wonder... You know, what are behind the forces of death? But this is such a simple and easy answer, as I've talked about it a hundred million times, and that is it's Argus and Sargeras and the old gods. If you guys haven't seen my most recent video, I talk about how the old gods and Sargeras are working together. There's so much evidence of this, and yet it's something that I, I feel hasn't really been highlighted that much in the past. But that's why Sargeras' crusade is going to work. Now, I know that I sound crazy because I'm like that demon fanatic that's like, we should join the Legion. But Sargeras is filling in and fulfilling a role that the rest of the Pantheon did not have the willpower. They lacked the vision. They lacked the understanding. They decided that they would rather use the form of reorigination, which I believe to be completely unnatural, to try to reset life instead of killing it and letting it go through the rebirthing process. This is the purpose of Argus, the reaper, if you will. He lit it, he carries a scythe. He looks like the Grim Reaper. He's called the, the, the Death Titan in the files. He's definitely the Titan of Death, but I think also the collector and shaper of souls because all of the power in the Warcraft universe, whether you're using Fel, Arcane, 
light void, any of those types of things, I personally am of the opinion that they are manipulation of souls. All magic is just some type of way to change, shape, destroy, consume, utilize, bond with a soul. It's all got to do with the soul. When you change from a mortal to a demon, it's got to do with your soul, right? When the Titan Pantheon had their earthen and their other constructs that had stabilization matrixes in them, I believe that that all has to do with the soul. The soul shapes the body. I don't believe that the body shapes the soul. And because of Sargeras' madness, because of his, his ability uh, to see what the other Titans cannot because of his demonic form, he, I believe, came to understand the fundamental flaw in the Titan Pantheon's ordering of the cosmos. Instead of allowing things to be sustained by the light for eternity and trying to have light eternal and trying to have life and order eternal, Sargeras understood that the cycle has to keep moving. And if you don't start killing things and eradicating things and letting things die and letting the cycle of life and death order the cosmos naturally, then the void is going to win. We had to we had to end the incursion of the light because if we let the light take us over, we're going to end up losing to the void in the end and then all is lost. But see, the thing is, is that I don't think even necessarily the light or the void want to die. It's said that light and void are the most fundamental forces of creation, and that's probably true. They probably are the most fundamental forces of creation, but that doesn't mean that they don't also fall under the sway of the forces of life and death. I think light can die. And to an extent, I, I kind of almost think that void can die. Hell, I've even played with the idea that void is undead light, entropic, turned inward on itself, seeking to feed, maybe similar to an undead. And in order to sate that hunger, and in order to escape the endless darkness that is the void, it tries to consume life so that it can become light again. But the problem here is, is that the void is going to keep growing and growing and growing if death isn't put into the system. If things aren't destroyed, if this isn't allowed to cycle as though it's supposed to, the void is going to win. And that's why I keep saying Sargeras and his sword of apocalypse imbued with that raw power of Argus, that, that red energy, that is death. In Sargeras, we think we beat him. You guys think we locked him to the seat of the Pantheon. We think we've won that battle, but that giant sword in Silithus is enough proof to me that we didn't win the battle. We didn't beat the Legion. Sargeras came back, he was animated in our world, and he got done exactly what he wanted to have done. Even if it was more of a plan B because of what the Pantheon did, we didn't win Legion. We haven't been winning for a long time, and I don't think we're anywhere close to winning right now. In fact, there's a lot of whispers from BFA that actually illustrate this. The Void and the Light are constantly fighting, and the only way that you can really stop this crazy, insane conflict that for some reason we don't really seem to have a solution for is by doing what Sargeras and the Legion does, and it is exterminating the hope, exterminating that which allows the light to spread, because when the light spreads, that's when the Void spreads. Sylvanas is a danger to the Void because she doesn't want hope to start spreading on Azeroth. That's also part of the reason why she doesn't want the undead to go and join the Alliance or do any of that light-forging shit because she's, I'm pretty sure that she's concerned. She knows that if she allows that to happen, that things are really, really going to fall into a realm that we're not, we're not going to be able to escape from. Here's some of the whispers from uh, BFA that I wanted to talk about. Mysterious whispers. Her blood is making him stronger. Yours will too. I assume this is talking about the blood of Azeroth. Our blood is probably also going to contribute to this, but he who comes to reap, he who comes to reclaim the mortality that he sowed, the souls that he sowed, I think him, he, is Argus. Flesh is his gift. He is your true creator. I don't think death needs to come and completely reap you down instantaneously to kill you. All death has to do is make you mortal, give you the, the gift of flesh. As soon as you're mortal, you're already doomed to oblivion. You're already, you're already dead. You're already, you're living to die. You're birthed, you grow, you decay, and you die. 
again, I'm going to reiterate that people are going to say in the comments, to Pyro, that's talking about that's talking about Yog Saron, the 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 curse of flesh, the curse of flesh, the gift of flesh, all that. It's got to be Yog Saron. But the thing is, is once again, in, even in Chronicle, and if that's what everyone wants to go by, which I don't blame you, we're going to have to honor Chronicle, right? In that in that situation, and that is that. Yog Saron, Cthulhu, Nazoth, and Yashiraj are never referred to as he or him ever. They're it. They don't have genders. They're not. They don't sexually reproduce. They don't do any of that stuff. They don't hold a, a he/her type of gender thing. I'm not going to get into all of that, but it's it's just the fact of the matter. So when it says he is your true creator, what even is a creator? Well, the Titans are the creators, and Argus, Death himself, is also a Titan. So that that he who sows. The flesh, I believe, is Argus. Let's move on. Night falls, her song will end. I think that that's talking about a loon. Now, it is said back in the old RPG lore that uh, some believed that a loon is the, is the one that was responsible for the dream shroud around Azeroth. So I think that's interesting. A loon's song, the song of a loon. Very, very possible that that's what it's talking about. Her whispers echo loudest of all. Again, could be a loon, could be Azeroth, who knows. And these are the ones that are important. The world will burn with the beauty that is to come. The burning ones kept balance, lost now, lost. Their victory is closer than you know. Embrace your fate, all will drown. And again, this just goes back to the Legion working with the old gods. The burning ones kept the balance. They kept the struggle between light and void at bay because they understood that if you allow the light to blind the mortals, to take over and swell that eventually and inevitably nothing but the void is going to remain. Agrimar says in one of the cinematics leading up to Antorus, Our kin still resist the true path, master, but they will soon be broken. Another quote from Agmat, the mad, from Silithus, A door, a path, ours, ours. And then Zalatath, I know the Naru consider us horrors to be resisted. We do not share this view. They are merely beloved brethren that lost the true path. They will return to their masters in time. Now, the thing about this is that they keep mentioning this true path. The true path. And I'm starting to believe that this true path is death. That which we are all resisting. We're all resisting it. The flesh mortals, the titans, the Naru. We're all fighting the most inevitable force that exists, and that is the the end of life itself. We're all fighting against it because we're trying so hard to stay alive, but what we're not getting is that in our pursuit to do so, we're dooming ourselves to be consumed by the void. But Sargeras and the Legion can see the truth. They can see between the lines of the light in the void because what birthed the chaotic, fiery maelstrom that is the cosmos, that was the original cosmos before it separated into the twisting nether in the great dark beyond? It was allegedly the clash of light and shadow. So light and, and void clashing created chaos. It birthed everything, right? But the Pantheon isn't willing to work with that chaos. They're not wanting to work with the death or the disorder. They're all about the creation and the making and the life and the light, but they're not about the uncreation, the unmaking. And that's why Amunthul doesn't like Argus. Time answers to me, unmaker. No, just pain, only pain. Time answers to me, unmaker. The one force that can bind your relentless fury. Right? They don't, they already have a, 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 a bias against him. Here's the troubling part about that is, in Chronicle it even mentions that the Titans have had the power of reorigination for a very, very long time. Now, a lot of people keep saying, well, Argus just woke up for the first time, right, Pyro? He should be like the youngest Titan, but I totally disagree with that. With what we learn in 1000 Years War, Illyria is shown the memories of Argus, and it's described that she was shown a history that surpassed the existence of the universe. 
Argus is incredibly old, so much older than we think, and if the Pantheon had reorigination way back before the Sargeras betrayal and before the finding Azeroth and any of those things, then they must have had Argus. They they had to have had him in their possession because when you're fighting Argus, he is the reorigination. He even summons the reorigination modules and everything. He is the source of that. But I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. I think that the Pantheon has changed him to become that. When he's connected with Sargeras, when he first gets summoned at the seat of the Pantheon, and I've, so, I've said this so many times, but for some reason it gets overlooked, <laughs> he is brimming with light. His skin is red. He is golden, golden, goldenly illuminous, right? He's, he's totally not anything like what, what he is when we fight him. But the whole point of what Magni was told by the Titan Pantheon after liberating them from the Coven of Shivara is that the, the reason we need to take Argus's world soul to the seat of the Pantheon, the reason we even go there to fight him is because we have to sever the connection between Sargeras and Argus. And we see that happen in the cinematic. But what happens once that once that, that transpires? Argus rises, and instead of being connected with Sargeras, now he's just by himself. The, he's, he has no connection. And whatever's wrong with Argus, he's undergoing the full torment of that. That's why he screams in agony as soon as he is summoned. And that's why we then have to start to try to fight him. When Sargeras is connected to him, he's not like that. And again, as he shows Illyria, they used their its power to revive their fallen souls. It hurts so much. Its only solace lay within its dreams. So when Argus is dreaming, he's not undergoing torment. He's not feeling pain. And the irony is that when we get to Argus, when we find him, he's in a world soul form, which should mean that he's dreaming. Which should mean that Argus isn't actually currently undergoing any torment, which is kind of strange because Magni kind of leads us to believe that. Velen kind of leads us to believe that. But I think both of them are pawns of the Titans. Why not? The King of Diamonds has been made a pawn. Velen and the Drenai, as I stated at the start of this video, I believe the Naru and all them work for the Titan Pantheon. They're trying to spread the light. They're trying to spread the order. And again, I don't think that's a horrible thing. I just don't think that they understand the flaw in what they're trying to do. So anyway, we go there, we take that soul to the seat, Sargeras says, that which you have stolen will be your undoing, right? And the, the irony of all of this is that we are being misled the entire time to think that Sargeras is torturing this, this titan, this creature, that he's putting him through this endless torment, but... The whole while, Sargeras is connected to him, so any pain that Argus would have even been feeling, I have to wonder if it's like a shared torment type of deal where Sargeras was kind of helping to alleviate some of that pain, perhaps to even stoke Sargeras's own flame to keep him going. But I'm really, really getting off track at this point. The thing about the Void that we are led to believe is that the Void speaks half-truths, if you will. It has all of the different options. It sees all possibilities. But the possibilities for the Void, I believe, is the mortals. We're required. There, we are the hope for the Void to consume and to become light. And the thing about Sylvanas is that she doesn't, again, she doesn't want that hope to spread. Sargeras doesn't want that hope to spread. They don't want hope and light to to swell over the universe because again that will result in nothing but the void we are going to have to open our eyes at some point to what sargeras and the legion know because our mortal eyes our flesh eyes keep us so afraid they keep us so so reserved and they keep us fighting forever but guys what are we going to keep fighting for like what we just keep fighting forever and and we we just never give up like What's going to happen? Like, there's going to be a point at which pe the warriors get tired. You're start you're already starting to see it with certain characters in the game. Saurfang doesn't even want to fight anymore. Some of these characters, they're, they're, they're just... It's too much. It's too much for the mortal to bear. And that's why Sargeras decided that he needed to use demons to accomplish his goal. Someone asked me, why doesn't Sargeras just come to us and say, Hey, look, here's the truth about what's going on with the Pantheon. This is the problem. This is what we're going to have to do. Why doesn't he do that? Well, it's simple. 
you're not going to convince the mortals that what you're doing is right. They're going to call it madness. They're going to fight back against it. How could we possibly go around and use the forces of death and fell to eradicate life, to keep this cycle moving, to, to keep keep the, the, the universe in order? How are, you know, we can't, that's, this is madness, right? There's going to be characters who refuse to do that. The light's going to refuse to do that. Hell, even those that are aligned with the void are probably going to refuse to do that. And on that note, I'm going to say again, I believe that in some way it's possible that the old gods serve the void, as in they feed the void. But I don't think that the old gods are the void, and I don't think that they even come from the void. I think that the old gods are figments of death. They are death and decay. They are the mortality, right? They are flesh. But the problem is, is that everything in this universe, the old gods and even ourselves included, are being locked in a manner of eternal rebirth. Death doesn't even matter for us, like right? Like even if you die, you can be raised as an undead. The light can bring you back. The void can even bring you back. There's multiple forces that pretty much make death totally irrelevant. It's almost like this universe that we live in is designed in order to eliminate the forces of chaos, death, and to an extent, even void. And that's what Sargeras is trying to remedy. So I feel like I could rant about this forever, but if you guys go back and check out some of my some of my past videos, specifically the more recent ones about the Naru, the Draenei, about the Sword and Silithus, about the old gods working with the Legion, it's going to start to make more sense to you. We've been led to believe that the only way that we can continue to exist is to fight against the Legion and to keep fighting the inevitable. But the beautiful, terrifying thing about the Warcraft universe that I think that the mortals don't understand is that death is the end of all things. Argus is the end of all things, but with all endings come a new beginning. Just because you die doesn't mean that you can't be reincarnated as something beautiful, right? What if Argus's whole job is to go around and reap things, take the souls, and reshape it into new and beautiful, chaotic life? See, but the problem is, is that's not orderly. It's not how the Pantheon would want it. And it all goes back to what I keep saying the Pantheon did to Argus. They took Argus at some point, and they fucked him up, and they turned him into reorigination. And that's not how he's supposed to be. Even look at Argus's armor. It's so Titan-esque. It's so Pantheon-esque. It, it looks exactly like something that they would design. But the thing about all of it is, is that I don't think that it's their job to make sure that all of the forces work exactly how they want them to work. They've tried to order the chaos. They've tried to order the void. They've tried to order the death and do everything without those forces. And it's simply not working. It's just not. And so Sargeras and the Legion stepped in to do what no one else could, and that was to send us down the true path. And the true path is, unfortunately, death, but also rebirth. Because Sargeras is not doing all of this for no reason. If he wanted to destroy Azeroth, as I've said before, he would have cleaved that world right in two when, when he was summoned. It would have been done and dusted, no problem. But he didn't. And he didn't do it on purpose, because Sargeras' goal was never to completely ruin and, and just eradicate the whole universe so that we're all just fucked, Sargeras would not stop until he stood over a universe of embers. And the beauty in it is that it is just like the phoenix. Burn it all to ash, and from the ash will rise life anew. And that was the whole premise of Sargeras' original plan, is that he hoped that if life had arisen in the universe before, that it would do so again. It must had to but if we keep allowing the void and the light specifically the light to swell out as it does we're all going to be consumed by the void in the end so then the question therein becomes not are you going to join the void or the light because in my opinion it doesn't matter i'm starting to think it's less and less relevant to choose a light or a void faction simply because they are one in the same if you treat with the light you're helping the void if you treat with the void well you're technically not helping the light, but the void is just going to continue to swell and grow, and then we're probably all screwed anyway. This is where I go with where I think WoW probably will go. We are going to fall. I don't think that we're going to win the battle for Azeroth. 
We have struggled and fought for so long, but we have all odds stacked against us. Sargeras even says, when my new pantheon rises, no power in the universe will stand against the Legion. Because everyone else is already on Sargeras' side. The pantheon and the light and the Drenai are the only ones that are still fighting against him. Everyone else is already on his side except, except the Titans, us, pretty much in the Drenai. Everyone else is already committed to it. And I think that inevitably, they're going to win. And as Sargeras showed Illidan long ago, no matter how hard this world struggles, it will fall. Behold the Legion's power. No matter how hard this world fights, it will fall. Our eyes deceive us. The army that marches on Azeroth is but a whisper of the Legion's true strength. Beyond this army is another, and another, and another. Even if we defeat them here, it will mean nothing. We are doomed, unless we find another way to fight them, and I will find that way. With his eyes burned out for seeing the truth, Illidan still did not falter, even under the gaze of the Lord of the Burning Legion, Illidan remained resolute and defiant. And I think when it does, we are destined to become demons. We're destined to have our eyes open to the truth. That the light and the void cannot show us, but only that the fell can show us. It might be chaotic, it might be frightening. But the demons, they're just demons. They're just another form of life. It's just a more chaotic version, right? The demons are not better than us. We're not better than the demons. They're just a, a, a more mad type of life that while they may be destructive to an extent, I don't think all demons necessarily constantly have to be destructive, but they were all mad enough that they were uh, willing to join Sargeras in his crusade to set the universe right. And we have done nothing but interrupt that. And I know that some of you probably think I'm insane at this point, but we are going to have to join the, the Burning Crusade. The irony in that is that Zero believes that if the Army of the Light failed on Argus that the Legion would initiate a new Burning Crusade. Do not be alarmed, mortal. Your consciousness has been projected to my astral presence in the great dark beyond. I am Zero, one of the first Naru to be forged here during the great ordering of the cosmos. You have come to the crucible of all creation in search of answers. Listen then and find enlightenment. In a time now long past, a great battle was fought that would determine the fate of all worlds. It was in that final battle that the all-powerful Titan Pantheon fell to one of their own. Sargeras. After the fall, none were left to oppose the will of Sargeras. Unfettered, the Dark Titan and his burning legion would go on to annihilate countless worlds in their burning crusade. From the ashes of those ravaged worlds, survivors arose to stand against the demons. They became known as the Army of the Light. But now, the Golden Army teeters upon the precipice of oblivion, as their campaign on Argus nears its turn. Should they fall, the Legion will initiate a new burning crusade, and with it the cosmos will tremble. A new crusade? But why wouldn't they just continue the crusade they're currently on? The burning crusade's not over, it's still going, right? So why would it be a new one? It's because it's different. 
It's not just about the destruction, but it's also about the rebirth. Hell, in Antorus, you can even see the dark uh, titan keepers in there use the power of Argus from the little red wells in there to reconstitute themselves. They even have a Sargeras kind of orange flame version of reorigination, the right type of reorigination. We're being blinded and, and manipulated in such a way that we're meant to believe that the Pantheon and all these things are meant to be eternal and we're supposed to protect them, but that's not our job. Because we're mortals. And in the end, death is going to come for us. And we will all serve death in the end. And I know that it's it's hard to get because it's 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 incomprehensible to the mortal mind. It's something that we even as humans struggle with. The, the concept of non-existence, the concept of death. But the beautiful thing is that in the Warcraft universe, like I said, it's not the end. And when this world finally falls and the fire claims us, I believe, again, that we will join them on a new crusade to fight against the Pantheon, to stop what they've done. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it all ends after this. Maybe when Azeroth finally wakes up, maybe that is the end. Who knows? But I think Bellular's definitely right in that in that regard he's on the right track death is going to stop the void death is going to stop the light death is going to be the balance the chaos and death the, the the chaos the destruction the depravity those are the true forces of the universe that which grants the chaos and that which grants the order all else is existent but relatively irrelevant it all really boils down to life chaos and death and while order is important you can have order through death, right? While light is important, have you guys looked at Sargeras? He, he's flame. He is what I believe to be the true flame, the true light, the true, the true light in the darkness. But I'm pretty much just rambling at this point. I want to know your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think about all this? Am I, am I insane? Am I literally insane? What do you guys think of Bellio's video? Go and check it out. Again, I'm just glad that someone is kind of starting to look at this aspect that the necessity of death for us if we want to beat the void we're gonna have to go through it we're we're gonna have to let go of that which keeps us bound that which keeps us afraid we're gonna have to have our eyes open to the truth and be reborn as demons because i'm telling you sargeras isn't coming to just er eradicate us right he even gave the drenai a choice you can join me or you can be exterminated you can be extinguished and we'll use you as fuel to accomplish the goal anyway. So what do you guys want? Are we going to be exterminated and be used as fuel? Or are we going to join and at least make sure that we're fighting for something? I don't know about you guys, but I'd be down to join. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Leave a like on the video if you like the video. Dislike the video if you like the video. No, like the video if you like the video. Like the video if you dislike the video. That's how I meant to say it. I appreciate you guys very much. Happy 4th of July for those of you here in the United States. This is a long-ass random video. Stay awesome. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.